Hey guys, welcome back to First Person Radio. I wanted to uh, switch gears a little bit and talk to you about handheld uh, VHF, UHF radios and introduce my favorite of the handhelds that I've found, which is the Quanshang UVK58. So uh, the gist of it is, this guy will do everything that the Baofeng does and then uh, quite a bit more. It's still in the same general price range. It's about $35. Uh, but it uh, is much better at scanning and finding new frequencies, uh, doing like kind of a little bit of basic signals intelligence work. And it is uh, a little bit more user friendly and has some nicer features and remedies some of the shortcomings of the Baofeng, in my opinion. Uh, so let's, let's get started talking about it. Um, the first thing is um, it's got great compatibility with all of the accessories you already have if you're upgrading from a Baofeng which also means that if you don't have anything, accessories are really easy to find because it uses the same accessories as the most popular radio on the market. So starting over here, uses the same Kenwood two pin connector that the Baofeng does. So if you have, like me, invested a ton of money in like a, a Comtac uh, headset with the, uh, the Disco 32 PTT and all that stuff and put like, you know, six, $600 to $800 into the headset setup for your $35 radio, uh, you don't have to reinvest all of that. You can just plug it in uh, to the same, uh, to the same uh, port on, on your new upgraded radio. It also uses the same antenna ports as the Baofeng. It's the uh, SMA. And uh, I'd say this is, you know, the, the inverted SMA from what's normal, but you know, when this came out, this was kind of the unorthodox, that this is the male SMA and most of the uh, antennas were female SMA, but now now this is the new standard because everyone's using Baofangs, I guess. Anyways, it uses the same antennas. I would highly recommend you do what I do and get these BNC adapters, right? Uh, that change it from the SMA port to the BNC port. It's a lot heavier and more rugged and uh, you can just connect a new antenna with a push and a 90 degree twist. And if you're gonna be using this thing for signals intelligence and radio direction finding and all that fun stuff, you're probably gonna wanna be able to switch out your antennas a little faster than fiddling with delicate, tiny SMA connectors. So I would get those adapters. And the same adapters that work for the Baofeng will work for this. Uh, so the other great thing about it is, check this out. It's a USB-C port that you can use for charging. So you can charge this guy uh, with a regular old phone charger for a Android or the newest iPhone, right? You don't have to worry about finding your, your charging dock for your, your Baofeng batteries or your adapter for the car or whatever. Uh, it's just the same, you know, car adapter uh, or same uh, cell phone charging adapter, which is really handy. Uh, you can even carry a little battery bank around in the field with you and charge off of that if you want. Now it comes with this flush fit battery. There's a little pocket clip on the back here that you know easily slides right off while you take it off. The standard battery is 1600 milliamp hours and you can get spares pretty easily. You can also get this upgraded battery. It's a little bit thicker, right? A little bit chunkier and it has a lot more battery capacity at 3,500 milliamp hours. So I'd recommend you get, you know, one of these. Maybe keep the slim line as a spare that you tuck in your a pouch somewhere, right? And with that, you've got a lot more, uh, a lot more capacity and battery life out of it. So uh, let's, uh, let's turn it on. First thing is uh, the volume knob has got this little protector on the side of it that helps it to not get adjusted accidentally quite as easily. That's a nice little feature. And the first thing you'll notice is that the screen is way better, right? So you can adjust how the, how the screen displays things, um, but one of the, the mode that I usually use is it'll have the channel name and it will have the frequency at the same time, which is really nice. Uh, so when you've, got it per, when you've got your radio programmed and you're talking to your buddy who doesn't have a radio programmed and you want him to tell him what frequency to use, it's really easy to just read off and say, program it to 151.82 or 462.6625. Uh, with the Baofeng, uh, you're either displaying the channel name or the frequency, but not both. And you have to dig around in the menus to, to fish it out. So uh, that's really nice. The other thing is um, it's got the VFO A and B on the top and bottom. Right now, they're both in memory mode. You can switch one of them 
to VFO mode, program whatever frequency you want, and then leave the other on channel mode, which is really nice as well. So, you know, I can have my, my frequency that I'm talking to my buddies with programmed here, and then I can poke around and try and, you know, program in a repeater or, you know, listen in on a different frequency that isn't in my program memories without having to get away from the, uh, the, the channel mode that I'm using to communicate with my team, which is really nice. Uh, so, uh, it also, you know, still does the NOAA weather radio that the Baofeng does. Um, and uh, it also has uh, some really nice features in the menus here. So, do you remember on Baofeng's, like if you push the side button, it'll blast out static, or if you hold it down or whatever, it'll, it'll you know, turn on the light or start blasting FM radio. I've got the same side buttons here, and they can do some of the same things. But, right here in my menu system if I've got the upgraded firmware, which you should get, I can program them to do whatever I want, right? So this is F1 right here, this is F2 right here, and then this is the menu button. I can program a short press or a long press to do all sorts of different features, right? So right now, if I press F1, if I hold this long button down, I'll turn on and off Vox. I wouldn't actually recommend doing that. Um, I'm doing that because I'm doing some stuff with digital modes, I can cover that later. Uh, but what are my other options here? I can have it turn on my FM radio, boo. I can have it lock my keypad, that'd be nice. Switch VFO, VFO to memory, switch demodulation method. We'll get into that in a little bit, but this thing is a much better receiver. Uh, none, that's a pretty popular option. Just don't have it do anything. Turn on your flashlight, boo, and adjust your power output. Uh, monitor, so uh, turn off your squelch and give you a blast of static. That's kind of a bad. I start a scan, right? I have a bunch of different options here. And I have those two buttons, F1, F2, and the menu button. Although the menu, I only have a long press as an option for a hotkey because a short press brings up the menu. So, uh, you saw switch demodulation. So that's another thing about this. Um, it'll do FM, which the Baofeng does, wide or narrow FM, but it will also listen to AM or even upper sideband, single sideband, which is really cool. This this opens up a whole new world of possibilities for listening to different frequencies, including aircraft, right? So aircraft use AM modulation on a frequency range that this guy can listen to. It will, will not transmit on those frequencies, and I would highly encourage you to never, ever, ever attempt to transmit on those frequencies. That will get you in a whole lot of trouble very fast. But uh, you can uh, listen to, you know, air traffic control and air-to-air -air traffic and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. Uh, so the other thing, uh, while we're talking about listening, is this guy has a crazy wide receive frequency range. So the Baofeng will receive from, you know, 136 to 174 megahertz and 400 to 520 megahertz. This guy will receive anything between 17 and 1200 megahertz. That is a huge chunk of the radio spectrum. I really, really wish that this 17 was a little bit lower. I wish it could go down to like 3 megahertz, and then this radio would be, in my opinion, perfect. Uh, but uh, 17 is as low as it goes. But pretty much anything that someone's going to be walking around with is going to be somewhere in this frequency range, unless it's in like, you know, the Wi-Fi, uh, like super, uh, super high frequency range. So... So yeah, uh, it's got a lot going for it, and it's no more expensive than the Baofeng. Uh, so I'm probably going to leave this video here, and then do another video where I'm going to talk about upgrading the firmware and using the Spectrum Analyzer function, which is an absolute game changer for trying to detect and listen to other radio signals in your area. So uh, stay tuned for that, and... Uh, and uh, we're going to get into all the cool stuff that the Quanshang UVK5 can do for you.